G2D's making another Smash video. Andy, there are some uh, things in life that come in cycles. Uh -huh. Hype cycles is what I'm going to call them at this very mm -hmm. moment. And I miss the Smash yeah. Brothers hype cycle. Uh -huh. Avoiding spoilers, oh. guessing what characters will return and which will be left in the outhouse uh -huh. of ambiguity. And while we both oh. know which Smash oh. is the best uh -huh. one, objectively, mm. yeah. I've been wondering Tell which one has the it. best of a specific oh, mode. I know it sounds yeah. small and dumb, but well, I kind of crave listening. some fun single-player yep. Smash Brothers right content that you. isn't just Smash uh -huh. Run. So, which mode has been uh -huh. present in each game so I can compare them between each one? Classic mode. Classic mode. Good catch. So if that's the case, which game has the best version of Classic Mode? Good question. How much time do you think you need to research this very important topic? About half the length of a COVID quarantine. Wonderful. Enjoy your research time! Uh, the door wasn't locked. I wasn't taking any chances, you probably barricaded it. I'm not you. I don't care if you escaped. I had traps in place. Which Okra likely survived? Super Smash Bros. is a glorious series of party. party games featuring some of gaming's most popular icons fighting it out in a never-ending bid to prove once and for all that competitive gaming was a mistake. And within that shallow generalization of this party, party game series is a pile of returning and forgotten modes that make each time you power up any installment interesting. But today, we're focusing on one of the modes that has been present in every single installment, Classic Mode. Classic Mode is a series of stages designed to test all levels of Smash skill, from actual smashing against computer characters to completing some task-based stadium events, leading up to a final confrontation with Master Hand. It's a fun way to gather points, and in later games, trophies, stickers, CDs, and shit, I mean spirits. It's like a gacha machine that you have to fight your way out of. And everyone wants to kill you. And everything is on fire. And items will constantly fuck you! But the world has to wonder, with six Smash installments, have we now or have we ever had the perfect formula for the best version of Classic Mode? Why don't we start where it makes sense to start, the very first Smash game. The smallest cast of characters, the smallest gathering of modes, and the first time many of us met some of the characters and series they came from. Our house was unaware of things like F-Zero and games starring Yoshi before Smash 64. And now we own a handful of each, despite their vast history. This version of Classic Mode features a detailed timeline at the top of every event introduction. You clearly see the battles coming up, when events will occur, and how far you are from the end of the line. There are four sections to every single Classic Mode run consisting of one-on-one -on -one battles against computer characters, horde battles where you must take on several of the same character, a team battle against the Mario Bros, a battle with a giant Donkey Kong, a one-sided fight against Metal Mario, three stadium events, a war against an army of the Fighting Pulse, Polygon team, then finally a Master Hand Smackdown. These will follow the same order no matter what character you pick, and will unlock extras, and will congratulate the player with an image that would make an exceptional computer background every time you clear it. Don't forget the high scores. You accumulate points for clearing events and battles. Not only that, for varying your fighting style, completing throws, and kicking serious ass is how you get more points. There are even fun titles for each of the varying statuses you can get at the end of every fight, each with its own point addition and subtraction. Yes, that matters so much. Okay, fine. Scores matter very little. Clearing the run is the important part, which is why game overs are so generous. You just lose a bunch of points and get a refill on the lives you lost during your run. Then you just replay the event you lost at. Easy. This is the most informative version of Classic Mode that was also the most predictable and also the most repetitive. However, it also had the least to lose if the challenge reached a little too high. Fight for a high score, lose almost nothing when you fail. A great way to start this off. With the high score got, extras unlocked, it's time to move on to... Man, that's fun. Welcome to Super Smash Bros. Melee, the game that proved once and for all that a broken game is still a classic no matter how broken it is. What do you want? It was made in a year. True. Melee was an expansion of Smash in so many fucking ways, from modes to rule sets to stages to characters to collectibles to fun! While many factors and parts were updated and changed, how did Classic Mode fare in this shaky sequel? 
fairly well. You still pick your character, clear battles, stadium events, play one positively strange trophy gathering event, all leading up once more to a final confrontation with Master Hand. Unfortunately for this installment, you won't know who you're fighting, what giant character you're standing up to, and what team of characters you're actively battering. The only truly known events are the stadium ones happening every two battles. They happen in the same order every run. Well, them as well as the fight with the metal character immediately followed by a Master Hand Smackdown. It's those random elements that add to the fun. Those, the extra point value assigned titles you can earn and the extra coins you can collect. Melee is an expansion of the Smash series in many ways, even if it made Classic Mode way less predictable. Also, what is this Snag Trophies bonus stage? What happened aboard the platforms? Race to the Finish made it back in an updated form. Break the Targets even returns. But we lost board the platforms for... this? Why do only three trophies fall? What is this? Another way to collect trophies. That's all it is. A fun, somewhat strange way to collect trophies. Still so odd. You don't even get points from it, yet you can still fail or succeed. It just seems so random. Boy, if you weren't a fan of the random elements in this one, you're really not gonna like the classic mode in- Ah, uh, shoot. I forgot he doesn't yell it in this one. Yeah, we've fallen out of the era of the announcer yelling the title of the Smash game you're playing and into the era of spectacular opening themes that pump you up to lose to fuckers online who study frame data and smell like dishwater. Really, as harp you are bitter. This game gets no sympathy from me. It may have finally given us an accurate Luigi voice, but it also introduced Pit and Meta Knight, two absolute turds in this game. Nearly unbeatable in all respects. I always hated fighting them. Well... While James deals with his childhood traumas... 200 smash moves, a reflector, and the highest jump in the game? Who makes a character that powerful? We'll come back to him. Invincible Neutral Special! Invincible Neutral Special! Super Smash Bros. Brawl was a major update for the Smash series that was allowed the room it needed to grow, as well as the polish it needed to make sure it wasn't just another shaky installment. It slowed down gameplay to make everything easier to follow, and added more iconic characters, stages, and items into the mix. While it may have trimmed down the stadium events that appear, that doesn't mean it trimmed down the fun. Well, the fun to be had in everything but Classic Mode, which didn't receive the best of versions in this game. This is the least informative version of Classic Mode in any Smash game. I actually had to study the recorded footage to figure out the formula to this craziness. Every four battles, you'll complete one of five levels of Target Smash. Another six battles later, you'll complete the next difficulty of Target Smash. Other than that, I have no idea. You still take on a giant character, a team of characters, a metal character, but there doesn't seem to be a formula to it. The only battles that seem concrete are the first in which you take on Zelda characters, the fifth where you take on Kirby characters, and the final where Master Hand awaits you. What about the penultimate battle, which is just a regular Smash match with you and three computers? That's another concrete detail of each run. Ah, you got me there. This truly is a ghost of a mode, attempting to mix up the fun by introducing more random elements. You barely even know how many stages there are total because a full display is never truly available until you reach the final battle and notice there are only 12 fights with two target stages. No odd collection stages, no extra events. They even did away with the fun titles you earn for varying your moveset. Spam the strongest, most annoying moves, earn points, win. All of this with the highest proficiency of item appearances in any classic mode so far. So prepare to lose to fucking bullshit too. Yeah! So bitter. Let's relieve some of that by finally getting to... <laughs> Super Oh my god! Have to admit, I kinda miss the title shout. We all miss yelling, but we have to use our inside voices, Andy. Not with this installment! Shout to the hilltops how Nehru kneeling great it is! The theme, the new characters, the menu design, the portable nature of it, and Smash Run! Smash. Run. Dear Nintendo, please bring back Smash Run. I miss it. I also miss the hours of sleep I lost playing this mode in your game while I was in college. My brother Andy will now finish the rest of this letter. Hi Nintendo, please bring back Smash Run. Also, in the never-ending pursuit of gaming preservation and its significance, I have to ask, what are you going to do to preserve the Satellaview, your special blend of radio and home console experience? Also, is there any reason any Virtual Boy games haven't seen ports to other systems? Bringing content that is nearly impossible to legally acquire to the modern age so it can be preserved would be an excellent idea. Sincerely, two Smash fans just trying to have fun. That got a little off track. 
Anyway, while we may hold this game in the highest regard when it comes to Smash installments, we're really here for its version of Classic Mode, which introduced the single worst addition to Classic Mode ever, the, the Fiend, Fiend scale. scale. This handy dandy piece of shit will allow the player to determine how difficult they want their Classic Mode run to be, as well as how much it will cost them to play, which will also determine the greatness of prizes and the kind of boss you'll face at the end. The Fiend Scale introduces a system of betting against the game, which, with several elements of RNG and no stadium events available, means you are fighting five straight battles, then Master Hand, Master Hand and Crazy Hand, or both, then the Master Core and its many forms. There is an element of choice presented at each crossroads though, allowing the player to pick between three fights to take on. Easier battles are usually the blue paths, middle difficulty battles are the green, and hard ones are red. Sometimes coins appear on each path as well, more coins means a harder fight. Also there's a roulette for the kind of reward you'll get for winning each fight. It also updated how stock is distributed. Instead of picking between one and five lives to begin with and then your difficulty setting, you only pick your difficulty through the fiend scale. You will be allowed two lives per fight, every fight. Unfortunately, you'll stop gathering GSP if you lose one of those lives during the fight, whatever the din that is. And continues are the most destructive they've ever been. If you lose to bullshit, your difficulty is knocked down, you lose some of the prizes you've won such as trophies, custom moves, money, and you're forced to restart the fight for less or give up. In such an accessible, excellent game, why would they ruin classic mode like this? Sure, two lives for battle is a nice update, but the fiend scale is a bet against luck, and losing is means for nearly restarting each run. However, there is one nice thing about this mode, custom characters. Yes, one of the best things about Smash 3DS can meet one of the worst things about Smash 3DS. What's better than basic movesets you can learn from each character? Random movesets even computers have access to. Let's move on to... Smell the air, lick the screen, grab your nunchuck, boot up your Wii, you. It's time to play Smash! Wii U. The companion release for Smash on 3DS that shares much of the same content, all the same characters, and I'm a big dummy head. The biggest celebration in gaming keeps getting bigger with masterpieces, new event matches to compete in, new stadium events, special orders, co-op modes, better online connectivity. Ah, it's just so good. Sharing is caring when it comes to Smash on 3DS and Wii U, but of the several differences, Classic Mode differs greatly. It differs greatly from any other version of it in any Smash game, future or past. In this extremely odd version of Classic, you don't take on 6 to 12 battles of varied combat, instead you take on several free-for-all battles of weirdness! Yeah, this is odd. Pick your character, bet against the luck of Smash in the Fiend's Cauldron, then drop onto the stage. Then, other trophies representing other combatants drop down into groups. Then, a rival drops down. You must fight in however many battles it takes to empty the board, then do it again, then take on a pile of fighting Mies, then the various Master and or Crazy Hand battle forms. Where this takes a turn is in each and every battle. You may take on 1-7 to seven opponents, and after you do, several other combatants are thrown off the board. All fights with more than one opponent occur simultaneously, so many combatants are knocked away after each one. Then they regroup and you take on one of the remaining groups. This isn't... Classic mode? This takes all pre-established conceptions of a classic mode and throws them out the window in favor of nothing but 2 to 8 player matches full of items, stage hazards, and intruders. Intruders are sudden and random invaders in any battle that will simply replace another fighter in the group you choose. They're usually metal or giant and are therefore more difficult to face. I don't know what this is, but it's not classic mode. Sure, you still face the fighting me team and master or crazy hand plus master core, but the rest is just RNG. Complete random strangeness that jeopardizes even a prayer at good prizes. Similar to Smash 3DS- FUCK! Similar to Smash 3DS, continues are devastating, two lives per battle, more items in RNG than ever. It's not a good representation of classic mode. Hey, at least you can finally play this mode with a friend. Yes, because I really want to be dragged through this RNG fest with you. We're moving on! After the enormous gathering of gaming icons and information that was Smash 3DS and Wii U, we were justifiably excited for how they would expand the worlds encompassed in the next installment. The announcement trailer had us on our knees, licking the table our Switch resided on like a pedestal of excellence. What masterpieces would they include this time? What trophy origins would they detail? What stickers would we be able to use to alter our characters' abilities? And lo, all we were handed was this game that lacked launch mode, shoved characters down our throats like that's all we've ever wanted, and a glory glorified sticker album. Is this what we wanted? No descriptions, no first appearances, nothing. We've made two videos reviewing this game, do we really need to go into what it still lacks this long after launch? It's worth reminding people, but I see your point. The classic mode got a major set of updates in Ultimate that brought it 
closer to a palatable version of itself. For one, every character has their own individual run through classic mode with a name, specific battle conditions, and a specific boss. For example, Toon Link will take on each battle with two computer-controlled teammates taking on Ganon at the end. Bowser will take on several red characters, then Mario as his final boss. Everyone gets their own series of fights, strange bonus game, and boss. Even the DLC characters have their own individualized runs. Sephiroth is just made of the boss characters others encounter on their run. He never even sees another playable Smash character during his. Other characters such as Ryu and Sora fight in stamina battles across their runs. We assume it's to simulate the games they originate from, but it would have been nice to be TOLD that before starting. In addition to updating how each run works, the Fiend's Cauldron was REPLACED! Instead of betting against the game and all its luck factors, you're betting against the game and its luck factors? You pick a beginning difficulty between 0.0, .0 and 5.0, and each battle will award you with a decimal to increase the difficulty to a maximum of 9.9. .9. The amount it increases each round is probably based on your performance in some way, or the amount of time the fight took, or how little damage you accumulated, but there really is no way to know. So just use the cheapest, easiest moves to get the fastest kill, and you'll hit max difficulty and get the max points possible in no time. More updates include only one life per battle, Items and stage hazards aplenty, faster loading times, and the omission of context! Yeah, would have been nice to know this was going to be a giant K. Rool fight instead of being blindsided by a fight with one of the game's most overpowered characters, or the fact I'm about to be stuck in a stamina battle. Classic now no longer informs you of battles that aren't against teams or hordes. Because who actually wants to know what kind of fight they're about to take on? People who have patience. We're playing Smash Ultimate, James, not Super Smash Brothers waiting to hear what we're fighting so we can be better informed of our enemies in each fight. That seems wildly strange to me. This mode no longer tests your skill, it's a test of patience. It's sad to see a mode that started off so strong, so predictable, and so easy to understand eventually devolve and become less than a shell of itself. Alright. We've done our dues, fought our fights, and lost so much in prizes and pride. It's finally time to decide, once and for all, which Smash game had the best version of Classic Mode. After thoroughly analyzing each game's version and the footage captured therein, we can confirm the singular, objective fact. None of them are very good. They all have their specific flaws that make each game's version some level of uninteresting. Which is why we should instead pull the best elements from each one that would create a much better Classic Mode. Not for the next Smash game, just in general. The first iteration of Classic Mode was the cleanest, the easiest to predict, and the perfect way to introduce a mode that would change so wildly over time. The timeline of the battles you can expect is what we'll take away from Smash 64. Clear and present indicators to show who you are about to fight, where events occur, and how many stops there are before you take on a final battle would be extremely helpful in the next version of Classic Mode. Not to cause an argument, because I'm right, but the analysis screens of Melee's Classic Mode was what stuck with us. The post-battle screen indicating points earned, titles grabbed, coins garnered, and the time spent fighting. Everywhere you look is rife with information. It's so meticulous and well-designed, as if your performance is actually being graded and analyzed by software specifically built to do so. Brawl's Classic Mode is a hard one to pull much from, but if we had to pick something, it would have to be... Nothing. This version took away more than it gave us, and is immediately worse than its predecessors. I can't think of a single thing we would want to return from this. Smash 3DS changed the way stock is handled in Classic Mode. Instead of choosing how many lives you would begin with, you are handed two lives per battle. That's a positive change. Plus, the aspect of losing prizes when you get a game over means there are stakes in this mode, where previously points and coins were the only things on the line. If we could keep the stakes but ease up on the losses when seeing the dreaded game over screen, that would be nice. Ah, Smash Wii U. The game without a classic mode. Stop writing that joke. This isn't classic mode! It's called what it's called, James. Still don't accept it. Fine, from this classic mode. Let's bring back co-op play. This was the first Smash to introduce that feature, and while not perfect, many of these battles were much better with an Andy, I mean teammate nearby. Finally, we come to Smash Ultimate. This classic mode clearly had the most effort put in with catered campaigns. You weren't always going to face Master Hand at the end, or even Bowser for that matter. Instead, you would fight Marx, Dracula, Rathalos, Giga Bowser, Gallia, Ganon, and others I'm sure we forgot. More bosses should be added to classic mode, with specific conditions to reach them, similar to Melee's adventure mode, which would unlock certain battles depending on how the player performed. The perfect classic mode may never exist, but we do have the pieces to get pretty damn close. Maybe they will one day. Thinking they won't. But you keep your hopes high for both of us. I have other things I want to hope for. Will do! What game had your favorite version of Classic Mode? Argue about it in the comments and we'll vote on who comes out on top. Be sure to follow us for more great content! 
Thank you, and happy smashing. In Smash Brothers, not each other. Smash each other. <laughs>